A very good evening to you and thank you for joining us on Y254 Updates. My name is Patricia Murioki. And tonight we talk a ver about a very informative topic. Our topic for the night is understanding sexual consent. And to help us talk about this tonight, we have Emma Monguta, who is a founder of Mandela Foundation. She's also an Afro-feminist. She is a human rights activist and a burden political analyst. We also have MC Sefa, who is a founder and CEO of MC Sefa Events, and also an entrepreneur. These two young people are going to help us really understand what really do we mean when we talk about sexual consent we just try to overlook the term consent and see what really going diving into detail what these uh, means talk to us across our social media platforms uh, across our social media platforms at y254 you can also reach me at patricia murioki as we start off consent means actively agreeing to be sexual with someone consent lets someone know that sex is wanted sexual activity without consent is rape or sexual assault sexual consent is an agreement to participate in a sexual activity before being sexual with someone, you need to know if they want to be sexual with you too. It is important to be honest with your partner about what you want and don't want. Thank you very much for finding the time to be here with us uh, tonight. And as we talk about this, uh, we remember that some time uh, back there were judges that proposed for the sexual consent uh, age to be lowered to 16 from the age of 18. We also get to talk about that in our discussion tonight. I'd like to start with you, Sefa. When we talk about consent, what definition do you give to consent and how do you understand and perceive consent as an individual? Well, uh, thank you very much for the opportunity to be here today. Uh, I believe that uh, consent is something which is uh, underrated in society or maybe it's, under, it's seen as something which is not really important in society mm -hmm. by yeah. some of the people. But it should be known that consent is actually one of the most important things when it comes to sexual interactions because it's the agreement, it's the, the coming to an agreement of the two people or maybe agreeing to take part in a sexual activity and mm -hmm. it should be very, it should be sacred, it should be taken care of, it should be very sensitive. So I believe that uh, sexual consent should actually be given higher regard than it is in society right now. Okay. Yes. Uh, Emma, for you, we know that uh, there are also men who are sexually assaulted, but most of the times uh, when we talk about consent, the most um, affected group is women. What is your, how do you perceive consent as a lady? Thank you, Patricia, for having me here You're welcome. tonight. Um, this is a topic that I'm really passionate about and a topic that has pained so many women mm -hmm. and has wounded so many people outside here mm -hmm. and people are so afraid you know to talk about um, these and so many uh, women outside here young girls have been affected mm -hmm. and so consent means an agreement between two people to get that freedom mm -hmm. to copulate and these two people have to have the capacity mm -hmm. uh, in terms of they have to be both in the right frame of mind mm -hmm. and they also have to be at a certain age for for it to be considered consent for them to copulate mm -hmm. so that is my definition of consent okay mm -hmm. uh, i just mentioned as we we're starting that um, there was a proposal to lower the age consent to 16. Sefa, do you think in a country where we're still battling and still trying to end early marriages and to end teenage pregnancies, are we really in the right track when we start thinking about lowering the consent age to 16 when we're fighting such practices? I think uh, that's just outright being savage to these young people because one of on, uh, first of all, these people are not mature enough to make such a decision. Mm -hmm. Because sometimes you find actually the people who are at that, that age, the 18, which is uh, the legal uh, consent age, mm -hmm. are not even mature enough to make that decision. Or maybe mm -hmm. they misuse that privilege that they've been given by their age to make that decision. Mm -hmm. So I think uh, this is just something that is being pushed uh, without backing. It's mm -hmm. very malicious and it should not be a priority in such a nation. You should actually look into talking to the ones who are turning 18, the ones who are 19, to talk to them and give them knowledge and uh, the education that they need to know in terms of uh, in terms of consent because some of them get into it without getting any kind of uh, education or maybe information from parents or society. Okay. Then you have to figure these things out yourself. And uh, I think that is what we should actually aim uh, in, uh, to try and change in society. Mm -hmm. yes. As we argue that uh, some men or some women do not even understand what consent means, do you think, Emma, that 
the young girls and young boys, talking about now people who are, are under the age of consent in this country, are they even aware, do they even understand what consent is? Do they even understand that their no should mean no? Okay, um, thank you. So first off, let me just add on to what Sefa has just addressed. So my question to people who would think that it's okay mm -hmm. to, you know, let a 16-year-old have you know, the freedom to have sex, my question to them would be, what is their motivation? Mm -hmm. What exactly is their angle? What are they trying to um, drive at? What are they trying to achieve? Is it business in terms of now let's sell contraceptives mm -hmm. to them? What exactly are they trying to do? Mm -hmm. And as they're doing this, uh, do they have systems in place that empower and educate these young girls, you know, before they think of lowering the age of um, a lady, or, or rather the lowering the age to... 16 year, um, to 16 years old. According to science, mm -hmm. uh, a youth is not an adult until they are past 24. The brain is not uh, developed until somebody is past the age of 24 years old. So when we try and have people in policy making positions trying to lower that age to uh, 16, mm -hmm. what exactly are they doing to society? Mm -hmm. And what kind of future are, uh, do they want to see? Mm -hmm. Or what kind of future uh, uh, do they want for, you know, our country? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And um, back to the question you asked on um, consent, mm -hmm. most girls, uh, I really honestly don't think they understand uh, that issue of consent. Normally, uh, I have seen and I have talked to a few ladies and what they normally say is I've been with him for this time mm -hmm. and so they feel it's okay yeah uh, we've been going out we've been uh, maybe going for dinners we've mm -hmm. been going for dates and so I think it's time you know for me to engage so it's more of giving mm -hmm. than really just being in that right frame of mind mm -hmm. to consent mm -hmm. to, yeah. the argument of the judges was that they feel that uh, we have these under 18s who are actually actively engaging in sex. And their thought was that there are people who are serving very long um, jail terms, having engaged in sex with young teenagers who were kind of like aware of what they were doing. Sefa, do you think this is material enough for us to think that we should lower this? Because what if we're talking about the 1% that really consent and then these the bigger percentage which has no idea about that, how we not putting the rest at risk. What's your thought on that? First of all, that's 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 a very that's a very limited thinking because mm -hmm. it's an example. Maybe if we look at it in an example, it's like uh, giving a kid a sweet to mm -hmm. accept something. Mm -hmm. The kid will definitely say yeah. giving the kid candy, she mm -hmm. will definitely say she will do whatever you say. Mm -hmm. It's taking advantage of the fact that this person is vulnerable. And if we say that we're going to lower the age to cater for these people who they assume mm -hmm. um, are consenting to sex, mm -hmm. yet there are people who are not mature enough to make that decision. If they lower the age, that means that uh, they are putting them in a situation whereby uh, the society will become, they will be, they will, they're empowering these uh, predators who mm -hmm. are preying on these young people who are mm -hmm. not yet at the edge to make such a decision. And it's simply giving up. It's giving in to the pressure. Mm -hmm. That's simply giving in to the pressure of society and saying that we give up on ter in terms of uh, the consent edge, we give up. We just want anybody who is willing to have sex, let them have sex. Mm -hmm. That's just giving up to society. Mm -hmm. And maybe I went through, uh, uh, there's a very interesting um, um, article that I normally look into uh, by the par uh, Planned Parenthood dot org. Uh, it says that consent should be freely given, that there should be no pressure. Mm -hmm. Like this person should not force. And these are things that people need to understand uh, when it comes to society. It's these things need to be instilled deep into the education systems, mm -hmm. into the religious system, so that people go through them. Uh, consent should be freely given. It should be reversible. If somebody decides that maybe I'd said yes at a certain point and now I want to say no mm -hmm. because of this and this, that. it should be reversible. Mm -hmm. It should be informed. You can only consent to something that you know. Mm -hmm. You are grown up, you need to make a decision that you understand. Mm -hmm. It should also be enthusiastic. Mm -hmm. You need to do things that you want to do. 
not things that you feel like you're expected to do. Mm -hmm. And that is very important. And you should also be very specific. Uh, people give an example of if somebody comes to your place and maybe you engage sexually, but not yet sex, maybe you make out and all that, if that is consent, it should be very specific. If somebody agreed to a certain point, that's it. Yeah. It should not be pushed to any other point. Mm -hmm. So these factors need to be instilled deep into the society, mm -hmm. into the education systems. And this is, this is where we go wrong. Mm -hmm. Because the family, which is the smallest unit, the basic unit does not teach this sometimes. Mm -hmm. When somebody goes to school, they're not taught. You're only taught about the reproduction of yeah. them. You only know about the existence of mm -hmm. sex. Then you go out there to the world, you go to university, you go to other institutions, and you have to figure out these things for yourself. Mm -hmm. Yet you've not uh, get gotten the right knowledge, which is uh, those points. You've mm -hmm. not gotten to go through the teachings that you need to go through. So these things need to be instilled deep into society, mm -hmm. into the education system. When they're reviewing these systems, they need to think about such things. Okay. Before we get to look at probably should we consider teaching a consent in classes and also try to see what really our curriculum covers as far as sexual, uh, con uh, sexual education is concerned, let's have a look at a very small clip that uh, gets to really put uh, consent into practicality. That clearly tells us that the same way probably someone offers you something, if I offer you a cup of water to right now at this moment and you say no to it, the same way if you don't want to engage in sex with someone, if you say no, they're supposed to respect that. And let me ask you this, um, Emma, we have, people have different uh, perceptions about consent. They feel if you look me at a certain way, you've consent and they feel that if you visit me at my house it means that uh, that is consent what how can we inform and educate such people with uh, such assumptions about consent so that we are able to create awareness around this topic okay um, thank you so we have different types of consent mm -hmm. and I think people need to understand this the first is express consent, mm -hmm. that you clearly state that I am willing and knowingly engaging in this um, act. The other one is implied, implied in terms of your positioning yourself, your body language mm -hmm. could imply that, you know, I'm giving you consent, you know, to go ahead and do whatever it is that, you know, we agree to do. Mm -hmm. Another one is informed consent, allowing something to happen, knowing fully mm -hmm who you're doing it with, mm -hmm. and what is going to, to happen. Mm -hmm. yeah? So people need to learn that by the fact that you visit me by the fact that by the mere fact that you know we hang out together it doesn't mean that anytime we find ourselves in a closed room mm -hmm. it, it's automatic that you know we have to engage in uh, um, in or we have to copulate rather if i if i will put it that way mm -hmm. so people have to understand that uh, especially men and uh, this goes out to uh, the younger people, mm -hmm. uh, people who are growing up and also, you know, men, some men in our society, they need to understand that we, women are not objects. Mm -hmm. We you cannot toy with um, uh, women's feelings. You, you, you cannot be entitled to, you know, uh, their bodies and stuff. They have a say as, as much as you also have a, a say as a man uh, in a relationship or in a friendship mm -hmm. and especially matters consent mm -hmm. men really have to respect the no mm -hmm. and uh, we we need to bring up boys uh, and men mm -hmm. to accept that sometimes things have to you know take a certain time and that no does not mean rejection yeah. so then you do not have to forcefully mm -hmm. want to have something immediately uh, or rather uh, to just just uh, to justify uh, or uh, satisfy your ego at mm -hmm. that moment okay yeah. uh, so Sefa, how do we now talk to guys about consent uh, should we probably think about um, introducing consent classes probably in schools to make people really understand this both for guys and uh, the ladies that what really consent is at what point do i feel that i have been violated and how can we now incorporate this as we try to create awareness about our uh, sexual consent because it's something that if you look or ask around you notice it's something that we lack in our society yes uh, one i would say that uh, incorporating this into the schools mm -hmm. into the education system is very very important because mm -hmm. we need to clean 
or maybe make sure that the generation that is coming after us knows and understand what this is. Mm -hmm. But also we need not ignore the the influence that comes with the people who are not going through the systems, the mm -hmm. people who are outside, the, outside mm -hmm. there, the people who are working as CEO, CEOs, managers, mm -hmm. taking advantage of their employees, taking mm -hmm. advantage of uh, their students. Mm -hmm. And um, I would maybe like to maybe refer to the, there's a documentary that was released, I think, a, a year or two years ago about the University of Ghana and uh, yeah. the University of Lagos. And it was terrible because those uh, lecturers were taking advantage of students, mm -hmm. thinking of these lecturers who are holding positions like uh, their seniors, their mm -hmm. pastors, so and it's agree. so, so unfortunate yeah. that people who are out there, the people who should be guiding these kids, the people who should be father figures to these kids mm -hmm. are taking advantage of them. So it needs not only to be incorporated in schools, mm -hmm. but in society in general. Mm -hmm. I think things like this should be made uh, rape and uh, sexual ass ass uh, assault should be put up as even if it needs need be it they need to be capital offenses mm -hmm. because these are serious things that need if somebody does something like that they need to act as an example mm -hmm. the other day we saw a video in one of these arab nations about a guy who had uh, raped a young one and the, i don't know the, the the factual part about it but the, the story was that the guy raped a young girl and he was shot, he was the, the, the order was that he'd be shot in front of people. And I feel like that's, I, I'm not saying that people get killed, but I'm saying that it should be a capital offense, whereby yeah. people can learn from what is done to somebody else, that mm -hmm. I need to stop this, or maybe I need to not do this. Mm -hmm. And we also, as men out there, I'm very specific to men, because sometimes, as you say, the men tend to take advantage of people of mm -hmm. their position in society. We, I'm not saying that ladies do not do they so, do well. but mm -hmm. men are very notorious in that and we need to think in terms of sexual consent is not implied by what somebody is wearing, mm -hmm. it's not implied by their past behaviours. Mm -hmm. If somebody was a bad person or maybe was taking part in such things a while back, doesn't mean that now they're still mm -hmm. taking part. And it's also not implied by the places you go. Mm -hmm. As you said, if, I, if a lady comes to your place, it doesn't mean that she has uh, given you consent. Maybe mm -hmm. she just wants to spend time with you as a friend. Mm -hmm. And uh, we need to normalize such things. We need to normalize things like having friends with no sexual interactions mm -hmm. because that's how we're going to make a better future for ourselves. Okay. Yes. Actually, the Sex Offense Act 2006 says that a person who commits an offense of defilement with a child between the age of 16 and 18 is liable upon conviction to a term of not less than 15 years. Sefa has talked about men getting to understand what consent is. I'll bring this here because uh, someone uh, reached out to me when I posted this about this topic on social media and they asked me why is it that when a lady says no as a man I'm supposed to respect it but when I say no as a guy the lady feels like I don't want, I don't want I don't love I don't because it's also that part of it and Emma as a lady how would you address that to ladies watching us tonight who the same we want to be respected for them to also understand when a guy says no they are no is also a no okay so we have been you know brought up to think that when somebody agrees to have sex with you they actually love you mm -hmm. And as women, we have also been brought up to think that when a man chooses to have sex with you, mm -hmm. it's actually a compliment. Mm -hmm. It's not. It, it doesn't mean he cares for you just because he's probably sexually attracted to you mm -hmm. or just because he looks at you and thinks, well, I can, you know, have a good time with her. So women should learn that sex and love are two different things mm -hmm. and it narrows down to our values our attitudes towards that uh, topic and stuff and to also um, understand that as women mm -hmm. uh, as much as okay normally i think we, because we live in a patriarchy society mm -hmm. uh, normally <laughs> the men are favored yeah mm -hmm. so the issues that affect uh, society normally are on women more mm -hmm. yeah so to for women to understand that when a man says no mm -hmm. it's um it's him also you know um taking charge of his life and mm -hmm. also as much as consent applies to women it also applies nice. to men mm -hmm. so it should be respected and uh, you know wait until that time when 
both are ready to and also in the right age. And also, Patricia, to note that consent uh, for people below the age of 18 is not consent. So that that is uh, referred to as defilement yeah. and uh, a child who's below 18 cannot consent okay. under law. Okay. Uh, Sefa, your final thoughts on this topic tonight. What message would you like probably to share with people watching us? Yes. First of all, I would like to maybe, I, I actually smiled when you talked about uh, a man saying no, maybe not giving consent because people take it for granted. People yeah. think that uh, as a man you should be greedy or maybe you should be, should be out right. there to mm -hmm. maybe take advantage of ladies. If you get the opportunity, you should pounce on it. Mm -hmm. There are some men who in society who feel who stand for what they believe in. Mm -hmm. And when they say no, it's a no. So manome eksema in any effect, we need to respect <laughs> that. Also, we need to look into the fact that uh, uh, when we're pushing towards uh, making this a norm, making the, respecting the, f the, the art of consent, mm -hmm. we need to look into things like uh, how many people are pushing towards it. Mm -hmm. Because if we say that you're pushing towards uh, making consent a norm in society, mm -hmm. we need to make sure that at least a big percentage is towards it. Mm -hmm. If some pe few people have the ability to say no, mm -hmm. or maybe they have abil the ability to change whatever is going on, mm -hmm. and they do not do it, mm -hmm. it means that they are jeopardizing the efforts mm -hmm. of the few people who are trying, or maybe the many people who are trying to push to get rid of such things. Mm -hmm. So we need to move together as a so society. Mm -hmm. When we say something, we need not only say, but also stand by what we say. Okay. and make sure we push it forward. Mm -hmm. Yes. Emma, 30 seconds. What are your final thoughts about this? My final thoughts is everyone has a voice and consent should be respected mm -hmm. from both genders. And uh, people should understand that uh, their bod uh, the other person's body is mm -hmm. theirs and that we should respect people's um, choices. Okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much uh, for finding the time to be with us tonight and to really talk about that. I'll leave you with these. When you want to visit your friends or loved ones, you will call them prior to the visit and confirm their availability before showing up. We often ask and wait for a go-ahead before making certain decisions in life that might not be as important. Consent is something that every person in the society should be so intentional about. We can only win certain battles if we approach them with the right tools. Think of rape, teenage pregnancies, and early marriages. To add all these, we must all be deliberate about understanding and respect the term consent. No means no. Let us normalize consent and normalize respect. Thank you for being with us tonight. My name is Patricia Murioki. Do have yourselves a very good night.